I've been sim racing for a number of years now, and in that time we have seen plenty of significant technical developments. Whether it's the games themselves with physics and graphical improvements, or the advancing world of steering wheels, rigs and general peripherals, playing racing games has become more serious than ever before. This has led to the highly competitive world of sim racing and racing esports, with professional teams and drivers looking to drag every last tenth of a second out of their machinery. To assist with this, people are recording data and analysing telemetry more than ever before, which has led to a number of businesses developing their own tools to facilitate this. Recently, the wonderful people at Race Logic got in touch with us and asked if we would like to try the latest version of their VBOX simulator software, which is currently in early access, and it was very easy to say yes. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how it works, what it can do, and hopefully I'll be helping you make an informed decision as to whether or not you should be purchasing this. For full disclosure, we were, as I just mentioned, sent this software by Race Logic, but all of the thoughts and opinions in this video are my own, and you can read our full review policy in the description below. Now then, going back to what I said earlier, why was it so easy for us to say yes? You may well recognise the name Race Logic if you're an avid sim racer, as many of their products can be found within factory GT machinery. With game developers now recreating cockpits with incredible precision and detail, these in-car Race Logic timers appear all over the place. On a personal level, I've been using Race Logic hardware and software ever since I started circuit racing back in 2015. Ironically, I actually first won my own V-Box lap timer in a sim racing competition as a spotty teenager with bad hair. Since then, most cars I've raced and teams I've raced with also use a range of V-Box products of their own, from lap timers to pit lane timers and video and data recorders. Even just last weekend, I used three different V-Box products across two cars. Why is all of this relevant for a video about the sim racing software, I hear you ask? Don't worry, I will come to that. After a test, qualifying or race session is finished, I grab the SD card from the car and pop it into my laptop. On this SD card, you will find VBO files for every run, and if you have the VBOX video recorder, you will have matching video files as well. You then have to load up some free race logic software called Circuit Tools, and this is where the magic happens. Within Circuit Tools, I can analyse any of the laps I've done and compare them to any other laps, whether they are from the same day, the same driver, or even the same car. I can study optimal sector times to find out the best methods for each corner, I can look at throttle and brake traces to see who was able to get the power on earlier, or who was able to brake later. I can look at speed traces to see who carried more speed through a corner, or who managed to get a better exit. All of this stuff is hugely important for racing drivers, whether it's being used by one person to compare their own laps, or two people to find out which sections one might be losing time in. In a Pro-Am GT setup, the AM can immediately see where they're losing time, whether it's on corner entry, apex speed, or corner exit. It can even be used to analyse setup changes or differences between different cars. How much speed will I gain on the straights by using less rear wing? How much time will I lose in the corners? Or why is the Porsche a second a lap quicker? Is it braking, acceleration, cornering, or top speed? So, back to the question I asked earlier. How is all of this related to the simulator software? Well, because it does the same job in the same way. The simulator software, which will cost you £99.99, pence, acts as a video and data logger, creating the same types of files as the regular VBOX systems, and this can be used through the very same Circuit Tools software in the very same way. Analyse your lap times, compare lines, setups and cars, even compare different sims to one another with the same car and track combo. At the time of making this video, this tool is compatible with most major sims on the market, but not all of them, with Automobilista and Automobilista 2 probably being the most glaring omissions. You can find a full list of compatible games on the VBOX website, or you could just pause the video. I think the best thing to do now would be to jump on the rig and show you how all of this works in practice. For this experiment, I decided to jump on Watkins Glen using ACC and compare a few different scenarios. Firstly, I wanted to know just how much of a difference there would be between the safe and aggressive default setups. I fired up the trusty Boatly and headed out on a safe preset for my first run. It felt as expected, a bit understeery, lots of traction control intervention, a bit safe. This allowed for some consistent running straight out the box, and on my last lap I pushed a little bit harder for a 144.8. Next up, it was time for the aggressive default setup, which always tends to be a bit quicker but less stable. Things happened as I expected, the car turned better and I felt less compromised on power application, with less overall understeer. There were a few invalid laps and I left some time on the table, but the final lap was a 144.4. Finally, I wanted to try out a totally different style of car to see just how much the telemetry could reveal about the differences. I jumped in the McLaren and again went to the aggressive default setup. 
As I'd never driven this car around Watkins before, I expected to be a little bit slower, but within six laps I had beaten the time of the Bentley. My gut was telling me I was losing time through the fast chicane due to the kerbs, and losing time on corner entry. This car requires a totally different driving style, you need to coast into corners more as the car doesn't turn in on the brakes, but you can carry lots of mid-corner speed and it allows you to get on the power super early, which was my prediction as to why the lap time was immediately quicker. I should briefly mention that I did have some issues with the VBOX video captures when attempting it in 4K, but I've had no issues in 1080p. There's also an OBS integration which might be worth your time should you get your hands on this software. With all of that said and done, it was time to load up the telemetry and see what it revealed. The setup comparison is up first, and for reference, the blue border is the safe setup, whilst the red border shows the aggressive setup. Through turn 1, red has a higher apex speed, which resulted in an advantage of 500s by corner exit. By the time they reached the chicane, it was a full tenth. Into the chicane and you can see that blue breaks earlier, and then gets off the brake later, meaning that red is now 3 tenths ahead. Heading down into the chute, and blue is both slower on entry and later on the power a corner exit, red gains another tenth. The next section of the lap revealed a very interesting pattern. Heading into tow, blue rolls in faster and is later on the brakes, whilst red hugs the kerb. Blue gains time therefore on the entry, loses a lot midway through the corner but is then able to cut back across and get back on the power earlier, gaining back some of those losses. This is a great example of the data showing the differences between a V-shaped line and a U-shaped line. It was a very similar idea into heel. Blue carries more speed in, drops mid-corner and then picks up a good exit. This suggests I was subconsciously compensating for the lack of front end on the safe setup by going in quickly, rotating the car midway through, and then powering straight back out again. Exactly the same thing happened on the uphill left-hander. Blue gains on entry, loses mid-corner, and gains on exit, but is ultimately a little slower. The final corner was the first where blue was quicker than red, and this is because with the aggressive setup on this particular lap, I got on the curb too much at the apex, and overall you could clearly see the benefits of the aggressive setup through the rest of the corners. So, what about the aggressive setup on the McLaren? Through turn 1, the McLaren's apex speed is lower, so the Bentley gains on exit. However, heading up the hill, the McLaren begins to gain the speed and time back. By the end of the straight, you can see the difference in top speed is pretty big. It then loses all of those gains through the chicane, as I expected, 10 kilometers slower at the apex because I couldn't carry the speed over the kerbs. The McLaren does then go quicker into the outer loop, but that means I had to delay the power, so it was slower on exit. As they head down through the chute, the Bentley is 0.35 seconds ahead, but it's all up from here for the McLaren. So far we've had lots of fast corners, but the latter half of the lap is a lot slower. Looking at the data through tow, it becomes clear, like I had suspected, that the McLaren has better low speed traction, allowing for early throttle application out of the corners. Here on the exit, you can see that I have to modulate the throttle with the Bentley, whereas in the Macca, I can nail the throttle with no hesitation. The same thing happens through heel. The McLaren is full throttle whilst the Bentley struggles to get the power down. Same again up through the left-hander, and again through the penultimate corner. By this stage, the McLaren has pulled the three tenths back, and then in the final corner, as the Bentley gets on the kerb, the McLaren romps away for a 144.3. I have to say, based on my experiment here, the data delivered categorical evidence of what was making the difference, and a lot of it backed up my initial predictions. Some things though, like the use of a V-shaped line for safe setup and U-shaped line for aggressive setup were totally subconscious, and the data made it abundantly clear. All in all, it's impressive stuff. So then, is this simulator software a worthy addition to your sim racing library? Let me first return to the cost. It's £99.99 in its current early access state, which equates to around about €120 Euros or dollars given the current exchange rate. This means it's not going to be something for everyone, especially those of you on a tight budget. This will, however, highly benefit sim racers who are looking to take that next step in performance and really get the best out of themselves in a higher level esports event. This will also be a great tool for sim racing teams and engineers who can use data from several drivers to compare things and work out how to maximize any scenario. The other nice thing about this is that even though most of the analysis is based on comparison, you don't need a friend or a rival or even a teammate to make this work. You can be your own rival. You can compare your own setups, your own driving styles and get the best out of well, yourself. I should also mention that you can use the simulator software in conjunction with the VBOX lap timer. This works in the same way as it does in analog motorsport, showing you a live relative lap time delta to the nearest hundredth as you lap the circuit. 
However, the SIM pack that includes this lap timer, along with the usual cables, mounts and cards, will set you back £750. That is... a lot. And when you consider that most racing games, including iRacing, Assetto Corsa, Assetto Corsa Competizione, R Factor 2 and Race Room already have their own inbuilt relative lap timer, it doesn't feel vital. And yes, the in-game versions might not be quite as clear or accurate or user-friendly as the V-Box, but it won't cost you the equivalent of a full tank of diesel in the UK right now. The lap timer may be somewhat surplus to requirements, but it's still a great addition if money's not a factor. If money is a factor, however, you need to spend smart on your sim racing ecosystem, and the simulator software provides excellent value for money if you want to step up your driving. Maybe even your team's driving, or your mate's driving. You can actually use this software to have a laugh at your friends using science, statistics, and analysis to back up your arguments. PowerPoint, anyone? So, that is going to conclude this review of the RaceLogic VBOX simulator software. Once again, a big thank you to RaceLogic for sending us this software to try out. I want to hear what you think of it in the comments below. Is analysing telemetry a welcome addition to the world of sim racing, or does it all just feel a bit too serious? If you've enjoyed this video and want to see more, make sure you subscribe to the Traction channel and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any future uploads. Until next time, thanks for watching, keep it pinned, and have a great day.